yeah, if you guys want to get started, we can do most of our talking while we're on the site. So let's pile in with some vehicles. All right, you guys, we are heading to the diversion project. This is the Fargo-Moorhead diversion, really big scale. We've got the Cheyenne diversion that goes near our house, but this is to a new level. We've had a lot of flooding in the past few decades. I remember in 1997, it was all hands on deck. I was in grade school actually, and we had to sandbag for weeks. It felt like weeks straight, and people were just either losing their homes or trying to protect their homes, and they had many feet of water, um, pushing up against their dikes and it was it was a lot of it was a lot of bad stuff but it brought our community together and it actually turned out to be a great thing now this has been a project that's been in the works for I think like 10 years and they're finally building it now we've got a long ways to go still for completion I think they're still talking several more years maybe even 10 years the point is this though if we do not start now we're not gonna have that protection for our entire community that we call Fargo Moorhead, West Fargo, Horace, Hardwood, all those areas. One thing I'm wondering about is how does this work when two rivers come together, water flows downhill, so how do you cross two rivers? Do you know the answer to that? How do you jump the river? You, Maybe? you get a monster truck and go <laughs> through the water? Yeah. Hey, high five to that idea. All right, folks, problem solved. If you need to jump the river, just get a monster truck. so they could set the bridge girders and then pour those slabs. Uh, the bridges will be poured this year as far as on top of the structure uh, and they're gonna set the uh, the lifting equipment and it's sometime in you know, February, March, they'll come in here and they'll, they'll dig that out, break the ice and allow that water to flow through the structure. So what we're gonna do is that river, we're gonna divert it coming straight through here and then tie it back in on the, on the other side. What's the, uh, what's the object of painting? Uh, it protects so aesthetics and it, it gives a protection of the concrete. We do have an anti-graffiti layer on the uh, coatings as well. Uh, we've had a lot of our engineers and stuff come, come in from St. Paul and they're like, oh, I can't believe you don't have graffiti on your structure yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's not St. Well, Paul, so. Who even knows how to get here, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they'll find a way. How about us? Graffiti, imagine that. Ah, they're leaving without me. Electrical work and uh, mechanical stuff is up in that little uh, structure. Kind of right up there. Okay, I see it. Yeah. And how often will someone need to access that? Or is it someone doesn't stay in there, right? Obviously. No, I mean, it's more of a manual function. Uh, the diversion authority, from what, from what I'm gathering, they want to put a remote system in so they can operate these gates from a remote location. Uh, because these structures are spaced so far apart, the Corps of Engineers didn't want to design a system for one and then it gets upgraded and we have to go back and try to upgrade to get everything to sync. So once everything is built and then we'll identify a system and get it integrated. Just to give you guys an idea of how thick the concrete is here, check out just the base. I mean, we're talking at least a foot and a half to this uh, rubber barrier layer and then there's even more concrete underneath that there's got to be at least three feet of concrete just on this floor here it's incredible wow so i know the red river and the water rice will be open all the time during a flood event the gates will come down kind of choke off that river control the flow into the city and then we'll fill that channel
Look at the size of this rebar, you guys. You know what? I think that's gonna hold. All right, so these guys are going up. They're gonna be putting in some backing or blocking or forms to do the pour tomorrow. And I think he said they're gonna do a 16 inch pour tomorrow on this uh, gate here. That's incredible. They're gonna pour the thing in place. Wow. All right, better get back caught up with a group. This is our uh, bridge. Yes, we are designing massive structures, but we're very limited on budget for the bridge. So keep that in mind. And we have a remote control compactor here. That is really cool, actually. That is crazy, you guys, that is cool. Just look at the size of this structure behind me. Just a gate. That's all it is, is a gate for the Red River to help our city not flood anymore. Well, if you guys have seen some of my past videos on my home project, the bunker, the under the patio bunker I'm building, now I know where all the concrete is going in our area. There is a concrete shortage, a labor shortage, and uh, well, guess what? This is probably part of the problem. I mean, part of the reason, it's not a problem. It's a good thing. It's, you know, community over my, my bunker. That's important. Don't wanna be selfish here. Let's go hiking. Mountain climbing in yep. Fargo. This is, this is Fargo's biggest hill, mountain. <laughs> I know you guys are tired because you're used to flat ground, but come on, we can do it. Just kidding. They're like, who is this guy? <laughs> oh, IBI, our, our interstate I-29 uh, construction yep. project. Yeah. That bridge is for the Red River floodwaters that okay. flow underneath the interstate and flow over to this structure and fill our channel up. How many more years are there to go on this whole project just for it to so, be functional? 20, 2027. 2027? 2027 is, is the, the functional. So we're not gonna finish out this embankment between the Red River and the Wild Rice until, some, until you know, probably 2025, 2026. Okay. And how many years have we been at it so far? Well, we broke ground in 20, what was it, 2017. Uh, we had the federal injunctions. We had to, to hold off for a bit, change some of the designs. Uh, Diversion Inlet went back at it again, uh, hard in 2019. Uh, that structure will finish up next year. Wild Rice will finish up next year as well. And then uh, we have a couple more years left on, on the Red River. Okay, nice. If you're a professional in the fargo Mort area, an engineer, and you're looking to get involved in a group, this is a great one to do it with. And it's really just a collection of engineers from all types. I'm mechanical, most of these guys are civil. Some are structural and all kinds of other flavors, but uh, really a great thing to do. They do these tours. This is an example of one. And isn't this cool, you guys? I mean, you can't beat this. This is like, a lot of these engineers, by the way, have done work on this project. I did a tiny bit. I did a little review on a project. It was related to the mechanical portion where a PE has to, has to review it for it to go to the next step. And um, that was a couple years ago. These guys have spent a lot of hours on it. A lot of these um, engineers here and elsewhere, just, just thousands of hours, I'm sure, has gone into this and it's finally being built. So it's a really exciting time for, for a lot of people. The embankment is in conjunction with a channel. So they'll dig that channel out, use that, that soil to then compact and build that, that levee. Because it's clay, I mean, it's, it's a decent product. Um, but the contract we have on uh, Southern Embankment 2A section, they're, they're out of Missouri. He's like, this is my first time in his career that he's had to work with soil where he's had to, to disc it to dry it out and apply water in the same day. He's like, it's, <laughs> he's never worked with anything like it before. Welcome to the Red River Valley. Thanks for coming out today. It's great to have a bunch of folks look at the, look at the work that's going on and give you guys a touch of all the stuff Corey's been doing for the last few years here, so. Thank you. Thanks for having yeah. us. All right, guys, so we're back in the vehicle and we get to drive on the brand new interstate. No one else has driven on this thing as far as normal traffic. And uh, look what we get to do. First one's on. Should we do a top speed run?
interstate is. I'm getting a little bored just driving in a straight line for miles and miles yeah. with no hills. Thanks for watching. God bless. Remember, like and subscribe. And remember to keep up on all of our current content because sometimes these things pop up and you don't want to miss that. And special thanks to the Corps and FM Engineers for putting this all together and facilitating a great tour. All right, we're out. Yeah.